Thank you, William. Um, before I start today, can I just see a show of hands if anyone's heard of Finks before? Good, there's one, two, three, four. Cool. Is anybody using it at all? Okay, one. <laughs> Maybe that's half a hand. Okay, who's heard of database migrations before? And everybody's probably, I hope, using some sort of tool or, yep, yep, cool. Or maybe writing SQL scripts by hand still. Yep, okay, good. All right, anyway, okay, so I'm going to talk about um, Finks today. First, I'll actually start with um, what is a database or a schema migration. And if I take it verbatim off the Wikipedia page, it's basically a schema migration is performed on a database whenever it is necessary to update or revert that database's schema to some newer or older version. And migrations are obviously performed programmatically using a schema migration tool. If we go to that said Wikipedia page, you can see a whole bunch of um, tools on the page here, um, some nice healthy competition, and somebody was kind enough to insert my tool right in the middle there. Um, so let's click on that link and follow it, and you should be presented with this nice, sexy looking website, um, finks.org. I didn't design it, but, um, but yep, I like it and the green color scheme. Cool. So what is Finks? It's basically a tool that allows you to migrate your database schema over time. That's all it does. It does that one thing. Many people would like it to do a lot more, but we sort of follow the Unix philosophy and just do that one thing. We try to do that as best we can. Who exactly am I? My name's Rob Morgan. I'm the creator and lead developer of Finks. I've been writing PHP for almost 15 years. Um, there's my email, my website. Originally, I came from a country called Australia, if you didn't notice by my accent. Um, this is a photo I snapped when I was home a few months ago for Christmas. It's obviously very beautiful and amazing, but for some reason I decided to move to cold, dark Berlin in Germany. This is what I do day to day. I work quite heavily in Berlin's startup scene, um, looking after the technical aspect of another of a number of companies. And this is a photo here with some of my other co-founders just after we raised a big round of money for one of our startups. Looking very happy, as you can see, obviously. Right, now back to Finks. Let's look at a brief history of the project. So it was open sourced in 2012 under the MIT license. I developed this initially myself just for private consulting projects. Um, and then we decided to release it, open source it on GitHub. Um, it's had 38 releases to date. I'm very happy to say we broke 1 million downloads this year as well. So I think we're about 1.2 now on Packagist. Um, we've got over 115 contributors. Um, it's now used as the default in Cake PHP since version 3. Um, and it's also built on top of Symfony components. And when I say that, we only use three. We try to use um, as little as possible, but we don't reinvent the wheel. We use the good stuff. Now the features. You can write database migrations using PHP agnostic code. So this is quite a powerful feature of Finks. A lot of other tools do this as well, I believe. Laravel, to name one of them. Um, the good thing about writing your database migrations, describing your changes using PHP code, is that you make them portable. If you want to, say, use SQLite in development, but MySQL in production. You can, of course, migrate up and migrate back down again. You can see database um, data now after you create your database. This is a new feature we added in 0.5. So it's only been around since I think early this year or late last year, I forget, but brings it, us up to par with other tools. You can obviously take advantage of version control and branching and whatnot. And you can, of course, integrate with any app. So Finks does not rely or it's not built into a framework. You don't have to use all of Laravel to use the migrations. You can use Finks with your standalone application if you don't use a framework, or you can try to plug it into a big framework, ugly thing like Magento or whatever. 
get going in less than five minutes. Right, so supported databases. Um, out of the box, Fink supports MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, and Microsoft SQL Server. Um, the latter is using the nice driver from Microsoft, not the really old DB net live with all the threading issues. Um, if you want to us to support another database adapter, we normally do it based on popularity from the community. So there's one guy has been trying to get Oracle in for a long time, but I see no interest from anybody else, so I'm not haven't merged his um, pull request yet. Test matrix, if you're interested in contributing, this is how it works here. On HHVM, we only test MySQL, um, obviously, but then with all the other versions of PHP, um, we do all the adapters. Now, a little bit on the history of the story of Finks. Basically, why did I write Finks? Here's a funny picture. Um, at the time, we're basically emailing around SQL scripts. So we were handwriting these. We had a DBA. He would write them. Classic story 101. He would email them to some people. He used to put version numbers at the beginning of them, and he would sort of email us back and say, what version of the database are you on now? And I'd say, hey, Cranky, um, I've run two, three, and four, but I missed seven. Can I run nine? Obviously, you can't. Your database is out of sync. We had a bit of a problem. So we started to look for better solutions. There's Fing with DB Deploy. I don't think, has anybody heard of this before or used it? Or, nope. So everybody knows the Fing build tool, right? Yep. So it actually has a really um, simple database migration tool built into it. I think they um, copied it straight out of the Java project. It's one file, but it does enough to do up and down. Um, so we used that for a while. But we had some problems with it. We used to develop on Mac and Linux boxes, but we deployed on Windows. I think we're probably one of five software companies in the world that actually did this. Um, and that's essentially, yeah. yeah. So um, there was one time in my life that I was doing this. I'm not afraid to admit it. I've never done it since. Um, as much as people bag Microsoft, they are becoming a lot more um, open these days, I think, since they changed CEOs. And they have announced recently, I think this year, that they're going to bring SQL Server to Linux, um, funnily enough. So we might sort of see a bit better interoperability again. Anyway, back to Finks. Why should I use it, for example? We should use it because it's fast. Um, we've always tried to make it fast. We just do one thing, that's migrations. We try to do it very, very well. We don't have to install a ton of dependencies um, or a big framework or some big bloatware to, to get it to go. Um, the competition's slower as well because I've tested it all. We now support PHP 5.4, so we dropped 5.3 um, just a few months ago. And Finks is production ready. We've got many of our users have proven this. Um, I've been using it for a long time. Um, we're still sub 1.0, but um, I would say it's essentially production ready. Three ways to install Finks. Pair, Composer, or building a FAR package. Two ways to install Finks. Is anybody still using Pair at the moment? Okay, one. Okay, and, and by choice? Or, mm. yeah, okay, right, so, Finks was one of the first open source projects in PHP, I think, that went all in on Composer. So I dropped um, Pair quite early, whereas PHP Unit had to keep it for a long time. Um, we didn't have as many users, though, so it was a lot easier for us. Um, and that was obviously the right decision. Finks is a command line application, although it does contain a web application. I merged a pull request. I've never seen it. There's a web interface in there. You can execute your migrations. If anybody's ever seen it, please send me a screenshot. Um, I've been told it exists. This is how you execute it. After you install it to your project um, with Composer, you just run it straight out of the um, vendor directory. You can install Finks globally if you choose to, um, but I would recommend running it on a per-project basis if you want to use different versions. 
you get some output similar to this. Um, the main commands are listed just down here, bottom left. You can see the new seed commands are also there now. How do I create a migration? Well, it's very easily actually. You just go and type the create command and then you use your camel case name here. And why do we do that? It's basically a Fink's convention. I stole that from Ruby on Rails. Um, this name here actually maps to your PHP class name. So every time we've got a new word that turns into um, a name on the file name with an underscore. You'll see some output like the following here. And then, very important, if I point out this number down the bottom here, that's the version timestamp um, of the migration. So all our migration files have this timestamp and it's right down to the second. This is obviously a common thing you see in database migration tools. It means that you can easily version control your migrations. You're not going to have a name conflict with another developer since it's very unlikely two people will create migration at the very exact same second. That's how we do that. It also turns out to be a good way to roughly sort your migrations as well. Um, right, best practices for writing migrations. Um, if you're developing migrations, you should try and avoid environment sort of agnostic code. You don't want to say, if staging, change my database like this, and then when it goes to production, all of a sudden five different things happen. You don't want this. Common sense, you guys probably should do already doing this anyway in your application layers as well. Um, you should obviously version control your migrations. Um, everybody's using version control, right? At least CVS, RCS. What's the new thing these days? Git, yeah, GitHub, subversion hub, something. Yeah. Right, so you should do that. Enforce default values in the migrations. So at the end of the day, we are using relational databases. We're not using MongoDB or something like this. Um, the great thing about relational databases is they come with a lot of integrity. Why not take advantage of it? Save yourself putting that logic in your application code. And worst case, you forget to check it. The database is going to stop a null going in or a zero or what have you. Um, avoid custom SQL if possible. This is not always possible when you write migrations. You might need to do some funky stuff where Finx doesn't have a method available. Um, when you do write custom SQL though, you're locking yourself into one particular database vendor. So if it's a big important thing for you to be able to jump between MySQL and Postgres quite easily, then you should use the Finx PHP methods and the same with your ORM as well. And obviously use the change method by default. I'll talk about that in the next slides. Um, that just means you only have to describe your logic going up, migrating your database, and Finx will flip it around and do the opposite automatically on the way down. And let's talk a little bit more about that now. Um, reversible migrations, they were introduced in Finx 0.2. Um, I think for the project it was one of the key defining features that really caused the community to, um, to pick it up a bit. Um, since version 0.4.4, I believe they've now become the default way of migrating. Um, obviously, we just write the up logic and Finks can figure out automatically how to migrate back down again. Pretty cool stuff. This is what a migration looks like here. Um, be told I'm not allowed to step off the stage, but um, you can see here we've got the add column methods here. Um, obviously, we've got these data types right next to them, string, string, date, time. These are what we call the Finks internal data types. They each map to a matching um, data type for a given database vendor. So, for example, a string would be a varchar in MySQL. A date time's a date time. A binary field might map to something different in Postgres. Very important down the bottom as well when we're writing um, reversible migrations is that we call um, the create or the update method. Um, it's PHP. We need to know if you intend to create a database or update it. That's really important so we can obviously reverse it on the way back down again. And I just pointed that out a bit better there. Cool. Um, just to be clear, only some migrations can be reversed. 
This is pretty common sense. If you're deleting data on the way up, there's no way in the world I can figure out what you dropped and recreate it when we go back down again. I try hard, but there's some things that aren't possible. Um, if you stick with these methods here, create table, rename table, add column, etc., then you'll be fine on the way back down again. They obviously map to um, drop table, rename table, just flips the rename around, common sense. Cool. If you don't use one of these methods and you get creative, like some people do, um, you'll get an exception in your change method, irreversible migration exception. Cool. Let me talk now a little bit about the seed command. So this is quite new. It's been in there since version 0 0.5. Um, Cedars are great for quickly filling your database with test data. I say test data because I recommend you only use this feature in development. People try to run it in production all the time, creating a lot of data. Um, I don't recommend that. Um, you should obviously first migrate your database and create that structure and then run your cedars afterwards. Keep in mind that cedars can be run multiple times. So migrations, they run once and then they write a log entry to the Finks log table in your database. Cedars, you can run them repeatedly. And here's a little example of how we actually um, run the cedars here. You basically create them with the seed create command. There's that camel case syntax again. And then you can obviously call the run and pass in which environment you want to run them against. Just to give you a quick example of what the syntax looks like, um, a cedar is quite similar to a migration, but you don't have an up or a down method. You have a run method. And you can obviously put your code in here and lastly, you put it in array format and you call the insert method down here. Now something really cool if you've noticed in this slide is I've actually integrated with the popular Faker library. Um, is anybody using Faker at all? This is, yeah, so this is super cool. Um, you can drag this into your, um, your cedars and you basically repeatedly call the Faker um, methods here and it creates a great way if you want to say create 2,000 users and get some fake emails and names that matches a good format. Um, Faker will basically run all that data, generate all that fake data for you. Great. Now, I'm going to talk about a real world use case. Um, we'll put Finks to the test. Basically, let's pretend that our customer wants us to build a new web application. Here he is. Um, he's basically asked us to build a competitor to WordPress. Of course, he needs it tomorrow and he's willing to pay some money. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with Manny. Here's the application that he wants us to build. It's basically a really simple blogging application. I can see that it's definitely 10 times better than WordPress. Good thing is, Finks can actually help us to build this application, but it can't do everything. First of all, we need to install it. And I'm going to use Composer for that, as it's the most popular method. Basically, run, assuming that we've downloaded and installed Composer, um, the installation changes every time I read the page. I'm not sure if Geordie's here, but I'm not sure what the current method is. Um, Assuming we've installed it, we run this, it will add it to our JSON file, and then we can obviously call it again to install it. Some output should go past like this. Please ignore all the doctrine stuff. We don't need this to run Finks. I've just used it because I'm lazy and it makes it easy to query some of the database stuff. And now we're basically going to create um, a database schema. This is how we can create our post table. We call the table method here. This is very important. This is one of the most powerful APIs built into Finks. It's basically a method that we use to um, get access or represent a table in our database. We use this shorthand helper here and we pass in the name of the table. This table doesn't have to exist. Then we'll use the add column methods and basically say we want um, three columns author, title, and a message. You can see the data types there. The first two are strings. Message is obviously text, and then we're just using the normal SQL limits on the end here. 
I also have this helper method that you can see, add timestamps. That basically translates to two add column statements. We've got a created at and an updated at. Um, if you want to obviously have some sort of timestamp on your um, on your blog posts, we then go and hit save there. I'm allowed to call save because I'm using an up and a down method here instead of the change method. You can obviously see this is how we clean up when we go back down again. We just drop the table. Good thing is I've recorded a nice little video, so I'm just going to play that now um, and demonstrate how it all works. You can see here I'm basically executing Finks. This is what happens when you run it without any arguments. Can everybody see this? It's not too small, is it? Yep. Okay. Awesome. We run the status command. This will show us which database migrations have been run and which ones haven't. And then here comes the fun stuff. We can actually go and migrate our database now. And I'll pass in the VV flags so we can see a bit of verbosity, exactly what it's doing, how long it took. So less than, what's that, 0 0.07 seconds there to set up our database table. Um, and now I'm going to reverse that and basically migrate back down again. And that will obviously clean up um, all of the database. So essentially, we did nothing before it. Right, a uh, little bit on what's coming up in the future on Finks um, in 0 0.6.0. Um, first of all, some people ask me often about Docker support. Um, so will we support Docker? Docker? Will we make a Docker file for Finks? I happen to have one already that I use privately. Um, it's not really that requested, but it is possible if you're looking to do this on deployment or something like this. Uh, essentially, you have to, because you need to be able to access your migration files, we normally link in um, our directory. So app here, um, you call the obviously the Finx package. When you're migrating, you have to, obviously, I've shown down in the bottom example here um, how you can link a database. This is using the legacy Docker function, which is obviously the links that's now been replaced by networking. Um, I haven't actually used networking yet, so I've got no idea how it works really, but I'll update it soon. This hasn't been open sourced yet. There's nothing much there. It's just a Docker file in Alpine Linux. I'll push it up later today. I'll just get it working a bit nicer. Also coming in Finks is probably a lightweight ORM. A lot of people use Finks in this capacity already, myself included. So since we introduced the seeding feature, Finks obviously has insert commands. It can already do a lot of select commands and execute commands as well. We're just missing update and delete. Whilst this is not strictly a migration tool function, it's already a library that you've added in your project. It won't be too hard for me to add these methods. So it works well in that respect. We're probably going to freeze the API a little bit towards 1.0 as well. This is when it gets a bit boring, but um, we've been changing things quite violently up until now. Um, and what about the future as well? People often ask, um, what else can I expect in Finks? And this is one of the most, um, probably the most requested feature at the moment after the seed feature. Um, seeders were, people asked for that for a long time. Many of the other tools are doing it, so we're happy to do that now. This one we've said no to for a long time, um, but it's now become a priority again. So multiple database support, if you didn't already understand, is basically um, some people for one reason or another don't just have development database production database and a staging database. They might have six databases in development and 100 in production. Um, nothing, too, nothing, nothing too extreme there, but we need to have better support for doing that. A few things we need to decide as well is how do we track which migrations have been run? Do we do that in a central database or on a per database level? There's still a bit of discussion happening at the moment. Another one people want is, I believe Doctrine does this, is a migration generator. So some people don't want to write their migrations by hand. 
They just want to point a tool or things at their database and it should um, automatically generate all that structure. Um, somebody wrote a huge PR for this. I hope they're not here today because it was awful. There's code, spaghetti code everywhere. Um, I haven't merged it. Um, I want to see a lot more quality for this. I probably won't have time to write it myself for a long time. Um, so we might come up with something together and we won't introduce this until we support all four adapters at the same time as well. We're not just going to do one. Data transformation. Um, Finx is concerned with migrating the structure of your database, but a lot of people have asked about what about transforming that data as it goes from one place maybe into the database. This is sort of akin to ETL, extract, transform, load, if you're familiar with that concept. Finx will not do this. Um, this will likely be a separate tool. I'm probably not going to be the one writing it, um, but that's just to give you an update there. Cool. Documentation. Got a very nice website here with a lot of documentation on it. Um, obviously, you can check it out. I encourage you to please open the documentation um, and read, have a good read of it before you open an issue. Um, right now, we're very far behind on the open issues as well, um, so it's much easier for us to accept a pull request if it's written well than it is to accept a um, uh, set up a world and environment to test um, your issue. And then contributing. Um, obviously, before you open an issue, this is pretty common sense, search the existing ones and even the closed ones. Um, there might already be an answer or solution on there for you. Um, fixing the documentation, if you're new to open source, contributions, that's always the best place to start. That's how I started um, contributing to Zen Framework number one before it got big. Um, and obviously read that file there. At the end of the day, it's only PHP. The community is not that opinionated and aggressive, although some people may defer with that compared with um, other um, programming languages. Is anybody contributing to open source projects at the moment as well? Cool. Cool, all right, okay, thanks. Um, I think I'm going a little bit fast, so we'll do some questions now. How long have I got left? 10 minutes or so? Yeah, oh, cool. Um, good, so thank you very much, everybody. We'll do questions quickly now. If I still have time, I'll give you a quick demo as well of some stuff. Hey. Um, I'll be honest with you, I haven't read the docs, uh, but the question is, um, do you support some kind of uh, feature where uh, if I run migrations on, let's say, many instances at the same time, because we do it on deployment, um, would there be some race conditions or is it handled somehow? Um, you have multiple database instances or? Oh, we have one database instance, but we have oh, many yeah. application yeah. servers and we yeah. just run migrations on deployment. Yeah, this is the same in the same respect as if you want to clear caches on deployment as well. So if you've got one cache server and you've got 16 instances trying to clear it, the one cache server, it's not a good idea. The best option normally is to have maybe a cron or a utility style server and as you're deploying to basically phone up that server first, maybe just with a basic SSH command and tell it to migrate um, your database um, using Finks. And then right after you get the OK back from that, if you're using AWS or something like this, then it's a good idea to obviously start updating your app code on all your instances. You shouldn't run um, migrations 10 times on 10 different instances. That's not going to end well, I think. Yeah. Does that does that help? Well, not really, but thanks. <laughs> I've I've had the same problem as well. Mm. Any other question? Okay, I have one. Cool. <laughs> um, all right, I'll just give you a quick demo of the um, of the Docker tool here. Um, and then I'll finish. Let's just clean this up. Have I got the database running? Mm -hmm. 
Bowling Street. Can you increase the font size a bit more? Is that nicer? Yeah. So what I've essentially done here is I've just used the Docker image. You can call the normal Finks commands, pass in your name here. Uh, what it's doing is it's basically, if I open up the directory in here, we can see I'm mounting in my normal migrations directory here. It's creating them on my file system. Um, I can also, obviously, if I want to be creative, I can run the build. I'll show you a little bit about how it works. It's cached, so it's obviously quite quick. Um, and then if I show you the Docker file, have I got it open as well? This is the Docker file I'm going to release later today. Not too much, not too much there. Pretty common stuff. Pretty common stuff. Um, it's using the um, Composer Alpine image, which is about five. Alpine's five megabytes, the Composer one's like a bit bigger than that, so we're going to shrink it a lot more. Cool. Um, thank you, everybody. I, st I still have a question for you, actually. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so my, my question is, is there a way to um, avoid uh, the, um, the reversible migration? Like, I don't want my developer to write uh, migration that go up and down, the only that go up oh so you only you one you way I, I only want I only want migration in one way okay in one way okay you don't want to allow them to go back down yeah. again is there a way to lock this feature um, are they allowed to go down in development or never 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 okay um, I'll show you the code later if you want me to I can rip it out the best way to do it is you can either edit the things or you can use a custom abstract migration uh -huh. class. And then throw an exception yeah, and in just the down yeah, method. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Then you don't have to hack the key, the core project and everything. Okay. Um, I'm going to be here today, probably tomorrow as well. If you need any questions or help, just come and grab me as well. And you can get me on my Twitter as well if you can't find me. Um, thanks, everyone. <laughs>